For the next 13 minutes, I'll be talking on role of GLP-1 receptor agonist in type 2 diabetes with ASCVD. The last couple of years had witnessed spectacular advances in the field of GLP-1 receptor agonist, both in terms of enhanced understanding and in the availability of a panoply of new options. So we now have not only injectable GLP-RA, but also have oral semaglutide. Uh, diabetes is a den of cardiovascular disease, and diabetics are two times more prone to development of ACVD compared to non-diabetics. And cardiovascular disease accounts for 50 to 80 percent of death, which is driven by acute myocardial infarction. The mere presence of diabetes cuts short your lifespan by six years. And if an MI or stroke gets superimposed, the lifespan is cut short by 12 years. This is the horrifying data from the capture study. One out of three people with type 2 diabetes has established CVD, and nine out of 10 people with type 2 diabetes and established cardiovascular disease have atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. But distressingly enough, only two out of 10 people with T2DM and ACVD are receiving treatment with an anti diabetic medication with 2 1 CV benefit. Now, these are the major killers of diabetes, and you can see macrovascular disease, particularly acute myocardial infarction, is responsible for 70% of that, and the other causes of death are heart failure and CKD. A GLP-1 RA target macrovascular disease, acute MI and stroke, while SGLT2 inhibitors target heart failure and CKD, and many diabetic patients in the wrong run as both these uh, uh, comorbidities. So, both these agents can also be used in combination. These are the five GLP-1 RAs available, but in India, only exenatide, liraglutide, and semaglutide is available, and oral semaglutide is going to be launched shortly in our country. This shows the mechanism of action of GLP-1 RA. They decrease, increase glucose-dependent insulin secretion. They produce glucose-dependent suppression of the glucagon. They decrease weight and appetite by central action, also by slowing the gastric emptying. And they also target insulin resistance at the level of the liver, the skeletal muscle, and the adipose tissue, and they have also cardioprotective effects. When we look at the utility of GLP-1 receptor agonist, it is a step towards good glycemic control, utilizes a disease-modifying approach to achieve the glycemic target, improves the cardiometabolic profile by decreasing weight and blood pressure, and decreases ACVD and improves CV outcome, and liraglutide is also shown to decrease CV mortality. When we look at the glycemic benefits, the reduction in HbA1c is to the tune of 0.79 to 1.83%, and 42 to 72 4% patients achieve the target of less than seven. And we know that GLP-1 RA targets six of the eight components of the ominous octet and provide a disease-modifying approach for glycemic control. And the added advantage is that hypoglycemia is minimal or absent, and they are a step towards a strategy of perfect glycemic control in diabetics. Diabetics with good glycemic control with the conventional agent, even if the HbA1c is 6.5%, can still die of acute myocardial infarction, as you can see. So the old anti-diabetic agents do not provide cardiovascular risk reduction. They also produce decrease in weight and decrease in blood pressure. And as you can see, the weight uh, decreases 1.1 to 6.5 kg. And the systolic blood pressure decreases from 1 to 5 millimeters of mercury. They also provide uh, ACVD benefits. And these are the four positive trials. Leader trial showed a 13% reduction in maize, driven mainly by 22% reduction in cardiovascular mortality. The sustained six shows reduction in maize by 26%, driven by 31% reduction in stroke. And the harmony showed 22% reduction in maize, uh, driven by reduction in MI by 25%. And rewind, which was a primary and secondary prevention trial, 70% patient is only risk factor, also showed a 12% reduction in maize. The leader trial, in addition, also showed a 15% reduction in the old course mortality. These are the two negative trials with GLP 1 RA. And this is a meta analysis which shows that myocardial infarction can be reduced to the tune of 9% stroke to the tune of 16%, and both are statistically significant. This is the real world data from the Danish National Registry and shows that metformin only when it is used with GLP-1 RA is showed reduction in the base by 42%. 
Delay in right therapy is serious implication. If the intensification is delayed by one year, the risk of MI increased by 67%, stroke by uh, 51%, heart failure by 64%, and risk of cardiovascular event increased by 62%. What is the mechanism of action? It has multifaceted actions. It improves endothelial function, decreases proliferation of the smooth muscles, decreases vascular inflammation, also decreases lipid accumulation, and also controls the risk factor for ACVD by decreasing blood pressure, weight, and controlling diabetes. And in addition, it also improves the fasting lipid cells, as you can see on the uh, left upper quadrant. It also uh, produces improvement in the CV risk biomarkers. And it also decreases the carotid intermedial thickness, also produces plaque stability. And in the context of myocardial infarction, the size of the infarct is decreased by 4 plus 4.1%. In STEMI and non STEMI, it is to the tune of 4.7%. It also decreases the infarct size. And these are the multifaceted uh, benefits on ACBD. It benefits atherosclerosis, also the myocardial infarction. It also benefits CKD, as you can see on this slide. And whether CKD is mild or CBD, it's also benefit. And these are the guidelines. All guidelines across the globe has recommended GLP 1 RA. Uh, Anting agonist for treatment of ACVD with diabetics or those diabetics who are at risk for it. But distressingly enough, only less than 10% receive this therapy. And there are two limitations. The first limitation is the cost. Uh, no doubt this is a costly drug, but what is important to remember is that 80% of the cost of treatment in diabetics lies in the treatment of complications. So if this is initiated early in the course of the disease, it will minimize complications. And therefore, the criticism of cost of liraglutide or other GLP-1 receptor is inappropriate. It is a cost-effective therapy in the long run. The second limitation is that it's available only as an injectable therapy. But now this has also been resolved. And we have the injectable semaglutide available as oral semaglutide, which is the innovation of the century. Uh, this is already launched in uh, five countries across the globe. It's going to be launched in India, and we are waiting to rejoice the launch of this new innovation. Uh, oral semaglutide has been uh, prepared by co-formulation with an absorption enhancer that is stack 300 milligram. And when these molecules are co-formulated, it is easily absorbed from the stomach. As you can see in this slide, the oral semaglutide has been tested in the Pioneer program across several subsets, as you can see. And when we look at the efficacy of oral semaglutide, it produces reduction in HBAC by 1.5%. And 70% of the patient achieved the HB1 target less than 7 It also produces reduction in uh, HBAC to the tune of 2.6% if HB1 is more than 9. And Asians, they have a greater glycemic benefit compared to the Caucasians. And it also decreases uh, weight by 5 kgs. And when we look at the combo of reduction in HBAC and reduction in weight, larger number of patients uh, achieve this goal. It also decreases triglycerides, VLD, and FOB, and also decreases total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. When we look at the safety of the oral semaglutide, this has been proven in the Pioneer trial. It achieved the goal of non inferiority and produced reduction in the uh, primary endpoint of cardiovascular death, MI, and stroke by 21%. And when we pool the data of Sustain 6 and Pioneer 6, uh, the benefit is to the tune of 24%, and the superior trial, sole trial, is ongoing. Uh, so, this molecule oral semaglutide has to be taken empty stomach in the morning, nothing to be taken for 30 minutes. And the initiating dose is 3 milligrams for the next four weeks, 7 milligrams for the next four weeks, and finally 14 milligrams for the next four weeks. And that is continued in the same dosage. What are the ideal patients for uh, this agent? Patient not able to achieve glycemic control, they can be uh, switched to oral semaglutide along with other drugs. Patients whom weight loss is beneficial, that is obese diabetics. Patients where hypoglycemia is a concern because it is minimal hypoglycemia, no hypoglycemia. Those who are injectable semaglutides can be shifted to oral semaglutides. And patients with established CVD or at risk of CVD, again, this is a useful drug. 
patient with renal hepatic dysfunction can be given this drug. An older patient also this drug can be utilized. These are the uh, two trials with oral semaglutide. So the take home message is GLP-1 RAs have established as a potent therapeutic drug for type 2 diabetes with multiple protopic effects. It is powered to do that BVNC body weight with minimal or no hypoglycemia and also produces reduction in blood pressure. Oral semaglutide is an innovative molecule of the century with efficacy and safety of injectable semaglutide. And across the global pioneer trials, oral semaglutide has proven its efficacy and achieved HVVNC reduction up to 1.5% and weight reduction up to 5 kg. Oral semaglutide has been found to reduce HVVNC more than SDLT2 inhibitors, more than DPP4 inhibitors when added to one or two oral drugs, and also decrease HVC on top of insulin therapy. In patients with baseline HVVNC of greater than nine, oral semaglutide resulted in HVA1C reduction up to 2.6%. Oral semaglutide has proven its safety in the pioneer uh, six with a strong potential for reduction in CBD by 51% and all cause mortality by 49%. And the large sole trial, superior trial, is ongoing to test its superiority. And the efficacy of oral semaglutide was established when given early in therapy, late in therapy, and regardless of renal or hepatic impairment. Thank you very much.